Welcome to the ResearchWorks podcast, live from the European Academy of Childhood Disability Conference 2024 in Bruges, Belgium. Join us for interviews with keynote speakers, world-renowned researchers and clinicians, and behind-the-scenes stories from one of the great paediatric conferences in the world. Well, I have to say, though I talk about episodes being very exciting, guests being very thrilled to speak with, this one has taken four years for us to have a chat. Professor Bernard Dan, welcome to the podcast. I'm very happy to be here at last. (laughs) Finally. And I think when we first met, it was when you were in Perth back in 2020, when the world was just discovering about the pandemic. And I remember after the conference, everyone headed home as quickly as they possibly could. I remember that was the timing. And then uh, I've seen you at conferences since then, but we've just never managed to cross over in time. I don't know how that's happened, but we're here today. Yes. You know, I, I... I think I caught a last airplane leaving and then I arrived home. <laughs> My country was in, in lockdown. Right. And then um, on the following day, so I, I landed on a Sunday. Monday morning, I was supposed to give... My first lesson at a university for a new course. Yes. But the university was shut and wow. I t- took the lead of the corona cell, as as we said. It was a crisis cell. Wow. Very, very special period, I remember. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, to be able to, I remember the, I wouldn't say the word panic just yet, but there was definitely a sense by the time it got to the end of the conference, this was serious. Let's get on home again. And wow, what a privilege it is to be here and, now. And my son had COVID oh, at the time. I, no. Yeah. Um, and at a, yes, well, so <sighs> when when I got back, well, I, I knew I'd, I'd, I'd learned about it when I was in Perth. Yeah. Um, and it took him four months to recover. But then oh, one day wow. he said, oh, I feel better and stronger than ever now. Wow. So that's good. And he's fine. Wow. I mean, what a sense of urgency to come home at that mm-hmm. point, right? Well, Again, just so grateful to have some of your time today. I feel there's a lot of things that I always have questions and to have access to someone like you who uh, has the privilege of sitting on on quite a number of really internationally based organisations. You know, you have oversight and you know where things are sort of headed. So not only are you editor for Development of Medicine Child Neurology, as many people will know, they submit to this journal, uh, very prestigious, very highly ranked, and then also the scientific chair of EACD. Uh, you know, you, you see a lot of research come your way and you lead the team, of course. What would you say is the big shift in research of of late, has there been many changes, or are you seeing it head in a particular direction? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think there there is more than one shift. Yeah. I think that there's big change. So yeah. within the field, um, it's like more interdisciplinarity. But mm. we had seen that coming, and yeah. it's very good that it's there. Yeah. With that, sometimes we we lose some of the expertise uh, because of the interdisciplinarity. That means that every practitioner becomes a researcher and every researcher can cover a range of topics. And they're not always uh, supported by people who with uh, technical expertise or conceptual expertise right. in the field. Yes. But this is progressing also because the publications and the research output uh, is also interdisciplinary and should be looked at in this way. So a shift is right. more collaboration uh, and not losing sight of um, of the excellence of each of the fields that yes. we, we're trying to 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 bind together. Yes. So this is one. Another one is um, over the years in our field. Mm. Uh, qualitative research uh, has really progressed. Yes. And uh, that comes together with knowing more about methodologies. Mm. And this rigor and this need for methodologies uh, has also affected the rest of research. And yes. so I think that uh, even in knowledge th- synthesis, where, yeah. where we're trying to say what we know about a topic, mm. we're much more rigorous. We know better uh, how to do it. Yes. And so the, this is really great. Yeah. But probably the, well, and, and there are more changes, uh, of course. <laughs> yeah, and sure. so you, you you were mentioning uh, when, when we were talking in, informally the change uh, in name of the Academy. Yes. So last night we decided to change the name of the European Academy of Child, of Childhood Disability yes. to European Academy of Childhood 
onset disability. Mm. And that was to reflect the, the attention that we have had over the years increasingly for the lifelong course. Yes. The global perspective, it has also become more important mm. and it is being represented at European meetings like this one yes. that are truly international and intercontinental meetings. Yes, absolutely. So, so lifelong global perspective and also the direct participation of people with lived experience. Yes, Yes. This comes with challenges. Yes. Um, that is, so we really need to make sure that people we call participants in mm. research really participate mm. and bring different perspectives, yes. help in designing studies, in analyzing findings, yes. and in s spreading, um, you know, results and uh, being part of discussion. Absolutely. And to pick up on that point, there's a lot of points to pick up on, but for that one, you are so right in that. Uh, even I was talking to Marco about this a little bit earlier. He mentioned that in the submission process, we really you wanted to really identify whether consumers were, were truly consulted, not even just consulted, they were part of the whole process. And know what their role was. That's and right. actually I wanted yeah. to be more radical. So yeah. my original suggestion was uh, to impose having a at least one person who has lived experience in the authorship mm. of all submitted research. And Amazing. then my colleague said, this is beautiful and, and we should go towards this. Yes. But we, we're just not ready. Yeah. So we agreed that it would be important to measure where we are and yeah. measure where we'll be next year. Yeah. And then in a few years time, hopefully we will realize this important goal. And it, it's important because that's the essence of what we do. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, certainly for me, when I was putting together my submission, it signaled to me this shift. It was almost immediate where I thought, wow, this is this is where we're headed when it comes to research. And, uh, you know, we involve consumers in everything that we do. I feel like it feels... This I'm probably part of the generation that's the recipient of all of this talk about what we should be doing and we're doing it and, and making sure that it's so central and integral to everything that we do. That has been, for me, one of the biggest shifts that I've noticed and something that really encourages me to always be answering a question in a really authentic way because there is, um, you know, Christine Imms, she'll talk about participation and I remember her saying, you know, participation, there's two parts of it. You can attend. And you can be involved. And it's the same in research. You can attend, you can be there, or you can be involved. And that that deeper meaning of being involved has a whole new element to it in terms of the richness of what that can look like. So some of my colleagues were a bit reluctant to start with because mm -hmm. they thought we're going to homogenize um, the, the level of research towards something that is really easily can easily be translated. Uh, oh. translated and then we might lose the basic science uh, elements what we have seen is that this is not the case yeah and in meetings like this and and this is just a reflection of where the field is you see a lot of diversity yes and that is very important diversity in topics in in methodologies in types of questions that are being mm. uh, being posed mm. and what I feel is really rich is to have all this at the same place. Yes. So you, you can go here, you can go there yes. and you have people interacting. Yeah, absolutely. What do you hope to see for the future? I think this conference is very unique, yeah, very unique uh, in all the aspects that you've just described as well. And, and the collaboration, it's, it's something that we, it's very obvious in this, in this entire conference. Where do you hope to see the field go in the next few years? You seem to be quite a visionary. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I do have a vision, but I, I'm, I'm not sure how uh, strong it is. But, <laughs> uh, but I feel strongly about yes. it. And, and what I can say is that, uh, so I mentioned diversity and I said there's a lot of diversity. Actually, there is more diversity, but uh, there is very limited diversity. And mm -hmm. so if, if you look at the people, their background, where they're coming from, from and where they're going back to mm. with what has happened here, mm. I think it's still quite limited. Okay. And uh, in the future, I think that we will see this more yeah. and we will be more, not just inclusive, but what will go proactively. Yes. Um, working together with other people whom we don't see now. And this includes the very um, 
topic of disability because yeah. we think that this is our topic. We think we are experts and actually we are experts. But when I go to other circles, to the humanities, mm. to, well, other visions, other perceptions, other um, other frameworks mm. for understanding the construct of disability, I see that we are an island. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes we do forget that we on an island mm. and we have this sort of total view. And I'm going to, to say something even more radical. <laughs> I mean, we, we have been cultivating this beautiful model of the ICF, of the International uh, Classification of Function and with a new understanding of health, mm. also in positive aspects and all these different dimensions. What I now realize is that it is placing the people in healthcare in or, or, or keeping them, if not placing them, keeping them in a power position in understanding every issue as being related to health. You mentioned Christine Ims. Christine Ims yes. is teaching us so much about how to think in terms of participation. Yeah. And we see societal participation as health. And this is very healthy for mm. us. But what we should not overlook is that there are other models than health and justice, for example, yeah. ma making sure that, that equity is respected yeah. or sustainability, making sure that what we do um, is also for the benefit of future generations. Yes. This, these are other perspectives yes. and, and do, they do not align as they are with the ICF. So we, so we should go and meet with other yeah. people, hear other perspectives yes. and make a wider perspective where, where we, we, can, we can find a better way of helping people. That is brilliant. And as I would say a wonderful example of that was the first keynote where we had them here on the podcast. I was, I was speaking with them and, they, and I said, oh, this is a very interesting combination. I have to admit when I sat down in the keynote and I thought, okay, I've got a clinical geneticist and Sally. Then we have Kath Haslam, who's a neuropsychologist or clinical psychologist. And then there's Alex Haslam, an organizational, and I thought, organizational psychologist. And I thought, how does this work? And they were attributing a lot of the, the fact that they came together, attributed to you, saying that we didn't know either. But after Bernard brought us together, we thought, wow, you see things in such a different way. Even how Alex was saying to Kath, you know, I've been to your conferences, I, you know, I'm often on the fringe, never really sit into it. But now I'm thinking about it and go, I think there's something to offer here, another perspective. And that was enlightening, Bernard. That was truly brilliant. I loved that. Yeah, and I, I must say... <laughs> Um, I was very happy with with the fact that it was the first, the opening keynote yes. lecture, because I, I think it set the tone, not only in content that was really, you say, to the fringes, uh, and and that was one of the points. Yes. Um, but also to freedom. Mm. We can meet, mm. we can think together, yes. and something can emerge. Yes. And we have said things during that session that was not prepared. Darcy Fellings um, had a very beautiful description of it. Yes. She said to me, it was very clear that it was well-prepared improvisation. <laughs> and That's so a beautiful it was. way to say it. Yeah, it truly was. It was. It was something that when you have people who are experts in their field, who are willing to work collaboratively and they can contribute for a common cause, uh, and you could see that come together so beautifully. And I could see the excitement on their faces when they, when they were brought together as well. They were all shaking hands with each other going, this is just so wonderful. When can we do this again? Bernard, where, when you see a lot, of, um, a lot of researchers, a lot of clinicians listen to this podcast and they'd be submitting their articles, they'd be thinking about, you know, the process of research, getting involved. From where you stand, what kind of advice do you have for these researchers about you know, the, the papers that they're preparing, the research they want to embark on. What's your pearls of wisdom? Because I feel like I need that too. <laughs> uh, so I, I think that what one important point is to know what you want to do. Yeah. So, of course, yeah, we work, we work in, in research project. Yeah. But we, I think it, it's useful to frame the question uh, in a way that it, it sits, uh, rests on existing knowledge, existing questions, and see how you can effectively move 
move the question further. Yeah. It doesn't mean change the world. I yeah. don't think this ambition uh, is ever a realistic one, mm. but adding something to what you do. Mm. I think that um, rigor as a guarantee that what you're adding is adding, that that's also uh, important. Yes. And then there is the, the storytelling aspect. So yes. you started with a question yes. and you have to convey it in a way that inspires people and that can then be taken on yeah. further. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so important. Sometimes it's uh, they're the basic things to make sure we know but to keep us focused on what we need to do. Uh, and a question I've sort of been really thinking about in speaking with a lot of people at the conference lately, uh, we all want to have methodologies that are robust. The RCT is usually the, the gold standard, but we're seeing a lot of adapted clinical trials now, um, registries, a uh, lot of different methodology. And we just mentioned qualitative as well. Mm -hmm. Sing, single case single experimental case. design. Oh, I love yeah. single mm -hmm. case experimental designs. What would you say to people when they're thinking about their methodology? Because RCT still most certainly have their place. Mm -hmm. uh, but what what's a, where would you head? What do you think is going to be a, a good way for clinicians and researchers to embark on research that's really meaningful? Well, for the moment, but, but it's the bias of the moment. I'm very excited about adaptive yes. platforms, about uh, master protocols. Yes. And uh, I'm very excited because I have seen how um, effective it has been in other fields, like in oncology, in infectious disease or in, in intensive care. And I see in our field, um, so pediatric neuro rehabilitation, rehabilitation in general, cerebral palsy in particular, that a lot of people have been engaged in research, but, but results have not been accruing. Okay. And so I think that it's important to find methodologies on the one hand that brings us together, that yes. allow us to have more people involved and yeah. also really feel that, that you can move forward with some flexibility. Mm. And for the moment, yes. I like ad, um, adaptive trials. But uh, uh, what I think is important is to, to keep a very open mind for methodology yeah. and applying them um, as you know, as they produce results, yes, yes. and and this is not easy. No, it is. <laughs> and easy, sometimes no. it asks that we go and uh, team up with people from other fields, mm. and that would be the best. You, you we mentioned yes. uh, qualitative research. Yes, the people around me uh, who are good with qualitative research are not very close to me, but they're around me. Yeah, they're people in nursing. And so what I do is I cross the corridors, I go to people in <laughs> nursing who have this experience of the strength, but also the challenges associated with qualitative research. Yeah. And so I think that I, if I want to embark on something with a new methodology, mm. I should not just do it from the book. Mm. I, I should involve people yeah. who have been using There's it. There's a lot of expertise out mm -hmm. there, isn't there? So final question, Bernard, this is a big one. In 10 years... What would you like to see a conference like this look like? Uh, I want it to be much more dynamic. So mm -hmm. for the moment, well, we've been experimenting with formats here, but I, I hope we'll, we'll have much more innovative uh, ideas uh, about formats to promote more interaction. Yeah. Because the interaction here is mostly the informal moments, which is absolutely great and very useful, mm. but we give relatively little time to discussion and to discussion in in you know that that is effective mm. so i think that technology will help us i don't think that we will need to have so many physical meetings uh, as we have had and uh, i think that i want to be inclusive we speaking english but a lot of people here yes. do, don't easily speak english and i'm yes. sure that uh, in this short time uh, with um, with, with um, processing of information, I'm thinking of artificial intelligence, but we, we're naming that now, but it's been uh, around for a long time. Yeah. But there's acceleration. So I'm sure it will be uh, very different. And uh, I want these meetings also to 
when there are meetings, nodes that they promote something that that can really happen in a collaborative way mm. between these nodes, mm. and make sure that that we have a system uh, that that can uh, scale up w- where we are, and also well feel the path that that yeah. we're taking. A great vision, and uh, I can't wait for that. And really excited where things are headed. So. Bernard, thank you very, very much. Very busy man. So, and this is the end of day two. So (laughs) grateful for your time to speak with us today and um, congratulations on a wonderful conference. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you to all of our listeners. I hope you enjoyed that as well. That was really incredible. But stay tuned. There's more episodes to come. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.